have the uh, Matco truck in here today. It's got some wiring issues with the transmission. It's defaulting in second gear and having no communication with the TCM. So we're going to check, see if we got powers and grounds where we're supposed to and all that. We go from there. Well, if you guys don't want to see me point on a wiring diagram a bunch in this video, kind of explaining what we done for diagnosing a bad computer on the Matco truck, um, there's a few bits and pieces, not much at all. It's mostly me explaining the wiring schematic and pointing out how it goes and all that. So it's more of an informative video on electrical. So if you don't care to watch it, it's just gonna bore you got to watch it. a little it. list of codes here. We got lost communication with TCM, AC clutch relay control circuit, AC intake air temp sensors, and all these glow plugs. So there's definitely something going on. I'm gonna try to clear these and we'll see if any of them come back. Okay, so we know we have a problem with the pressure sensor A and intake air temp sensor, which that could be in line with the TCM issue because if it has a mass airflow sensor like a regular vehicle, they like to mess with automatic transmission. So we'll see if they are connected somehow. So we got the wiring schematic for that uh, Matco truck and it shows battery positive voltage is pin 10 and the ground is pin 9. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I'm getting uh, power in the ground here and what my resistance is from my ground to chassis and same way what my resistance is from this wire to the fuse box. So I'll pull the fuse out and I'll ohm test from here to here, make sure there's no resistance. If, if it has low voltage, if it has normal voltage then there's no reason to check it. But we'll go ahead and check those and I'll make sure there, there's gotta be a wire in here somewhere cause this says uh, hot at all times. So there's gotta be a wire in here that actually triggers the transmission control module to turn on, which that may be in this, the serial data bus, but I'll make sure that there's no other wires coming into the computer where it gets a power or ground to activate it, because that could be causing it to throw the no communication code that it's getting. So I will go from here to there now, and we'll go from there. Uh, other breakdowns for more fuses to check for the transmission control module. There, This is also a breakout of it. This is the higher pin numbers of it. So that explains why he checked one fuse and it was good. So I'll make sure these other two fuses are good and then we'll see if we're getting communication with it after that. Okay, here's the other two fuses that we need to look for because this is a C5 series. So it's the ones to the left. Hang on, let me move my headlight so you guys can see this better. So. The first one I'm at is fuse 23. It's a 10 amp and it comes down and comes over and it's ignition voltage. So basically that one is going to the computer and saying, hey, the key's on. Let's turn the computer on. Let's work. So that's the one that's not, uh, not looking so good right now. If I look over here in the fuse box on number 23, it's the second one over from the right. That's a green fuse. Uh, see all those red tins? That green is a 30. So that means there's been something causing uh, problems there. Hopefully it's just a blown fuse there. And if so, hopefully it's just a wire that's rubbed or something that we can fix and it hasn't done any damage. So we'll uh, pull this fuse out and we'll see where our issue is. See if I can get this to focus good enough. But if you can see it, that is not blown. And that's that 30 that was in there. I'm going to go ahead and put a 10 back in it. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll we'll put a 10 back in it. And I'll check the other one. And then we'll go through and figure out why it's got a 30 in it. And why our transmission control module isn't communicating. All right, little oversight of what all we got done on the Matco truck. So it came in for a U0101 code. Which is no communication with the transmission control module. So what we done, we went through and checked all of our fuses first. All the fuses were good. So I got the schematics printed off. This is the power distribution circuit two of six, which right here, transmission control module. That's pin 63 on the TCM. 
and if we look at it, it comes up, and this is the one that is keyed power. And I'll show you that here in just a minute, how I know it's keyed power. But, so we tested this one with key on. We got our 12 volts. It was good. Let's go over here. This is power distribution 4.6. This is the other part that had the transmission control module. These are both constant power, pin 10 and pin 70. And it says it right here. Well, I'll show you in the other schematic. It shows it constant power, but this one, we had our powers on both of them. Now, if we go over to our ground, there's only two grounds on the transmission control module. Page four or five, transmission control module, pin nine and pin 69, we had our grounds. And we also had good continuity between the two and the same way with our powers here and our power here. So what we done was we did a continuity check from battery positive to each one of the positive ones after we made sure we got our 12 volts. And then we did the same thing to the ground individually and then across each other for all of them. It was all good, all right? So computer's getting its powers and grounds like it's supposed to. It should be active, turning on. All right, so the next thought, is it something in the CAN bus? So we get our, hang on, let me move some of this stuff out of the way here. We've got our CAN bus circuit. So this thing runs a couple different CAN buses. This one here is our GMLAN, and it's got a positive in the ground. And they both run up, and it says it's for the 66 Duramax. Runs up and runs over to these two spots. Well, they have a resistor in line, and you're supposed to have 60 ohms resistance if you come over here to your data link connector. It's just got an OBD2 connector. So between pin 14 and pin 6, you're supposed to use a multimeter. Well, I got a breakout box. We used it and we untested it. It had 60 ohms resistance. So we didn't have a bad resistor, which I didn't figure we would because I figured we'd have a lot more CAN bus codes if so. So on to the next thing. We do continuity check from one side to the other. So I did the continuity checks. Everything turned out fine. So. The only thing left that it could be is a bad computer. It's getting all its powers and grounds, it's got communication on the CAN bus, but it won't communicate. So something, something's messed up in the computer to not let it turn on or let it talk with the rest of the modules. It's stuck in second gear. Uh, he's supposed to be getting a new computer today to get it back up and going, but we determined it had a bad computer. So I just kind of wanted to run through all this with you guys. I will show you these other schematics for the Allison here and show you the constant power versus keyed power. So right here, if we look, this is the constant power here. Pin three comes over, comes over pink, blah, blah, blah. It splits off, <clears throat> goes to pin 10 and pin 70. Cool, we had our powers. Now, this one right here is our keyed power. So we see our ignition switch is here, and it comes out and goes down. So when your ignition switch is on, it makes contact. Well, this fine little wire you can barely see gets power when that happens. Pin five yellow, pin five yellow. We trace it down, and it goes down to pin 63. Pin 63, which it says it's yellow, but that is wrong. It's actually pink with the Allison. I can show you that from here. Let's see, not the data line, the prior distribution. Right here, pin 63, pink. And that's how it is on our connector too, because it does have the Allison. So it's, it's a little off on the schematic as far as the color went, but same wire, same pin. We did have our keyed on power there. So it's, it's always a frustration trying to figure this stuff out. Then pin nine goes to a ground straight from the battery. Then it splits off and goes down here to pin 69, wherever it's at, yeah, right here. Mm, yeah, right here. But uh, we uh, determined that we had our powers and grounds, good continuity between all the stuff. He's got my computer. So he's supposed to be getting that done today and get it back up and go. So I just got a, off the phone with the Matco guy and he called me back and told me that 
the computer was bad. He had he took it in town to get it tested and try to get a new one and get the right tuning on it. Uh, he told me the name of the place that's here in Indy that's uh, really good with those, and he learned some stuff. And apparently that it does, they, they're notorious for having a problem with it, having issues on amp draw to the computer. And that's probably why that fuse was blown. And he was having some problems when he hit bumps and stuff. But basically we got to make a new harness and unpin the connector for the powers and grounds on the new computer and run it straight to the battery with a fuse, fusible link or fuse block in, in line. So he's going to bring it back. He's got some info on it and he's getting the pins for the connectors and stuff. So when he gets a new computer in it, he's going to drive it back out here and we're going to make sure that it doesn't do it again. So we're going to fix the wiring harness and stuff. And he told me some stuff that I learned about it too. So it was uh, very informative. He's going to give me some more info. So we're going to put a part two video out when I go to make the wiring harness on this and get all that stuff going. So I will try to get a second video out when the Matco truck comes back. When it comes back this next time, I'm going to make sure it fits in the shop where I can close the door because it was cold that night. But, uh, it should right now we've got a uh, rv in the shop that's bigger than the matco truck uh, we had to finish another one that was in here so we could fit both of them in but i'm rambling on now so if you guys want to stay tuned we've got some other good videos we got a pivot loader that got dropped off this morning that's a very good size too so it's got a problem with the ring gear we're gonna tear into it and pull the flywheel off of it and either get a ring gear or get a new flywheel for it so That'd be another good one to watch. I'm gonna jump off here and get back to it.